It's now three years ago, Skahoy did the pioneering work on reverse engineering the ATOM protocol, and we did it for the Arduino platform, so it would be really easy to make do-it-yourself projects controlling ATOM switches, as well as products like the one we make in our company. And to celebrate this anniversary, we decided to give the implementation a serious overhaul, and that's what I would like to present to you in this video. First of all, Arduino platforms go as small as this one, so really you don't need any more than a printed circuit board like this with an Ethernet port from the Arduino universe. And it can communicate directly to ATEM switches. Like you see, this, one of our most popular controllers, is connected directly to the ATEM switch with this Ethernet cable. It's just this one and that one talking together. No need for a intermediate PCs or Macs or whatever. It's just this one and this one talking together. And if you look at our product range, we really have a lot of different offers for various scenarios. And that's our specialty, to give you a customized controller for exactly what you need. You can have remotes like this, you can have just plain boxes, semi-handheld units, you can have desktop models like this. And they all communicate with the full range of ATEM switches, right from the television studios that we know so well, to the 1ME switcher, the 2ME, and the new range of the 4K ATEM switches. So what's new? Well, we have implemented all features of the ATEM protocol, except things like file upload, which doesn't make sense on the Arduino platform. That's one thing. Secondly, we have tested the implementation thoroughly on all these models, so it's, it's certain that we can control any feature in any of the six current ATEM models on the market. Thirdly, we have decided that the documentation written in plain text is published as Creative Commons Attribution Sharelike. What does that mean? That's kind of an open source license for the information. So everybody can use this information, they can add to it as long as they uh, follow the license, which basically means attributing us for the work and sharing it under the same terms. Then we have also decided to make four different implementations. And this is tied to the Arduino platform, which comes in various sizes. So basically the smallest Arduino you can get doesn't have a lot of memory. And therefore we have made a minimum version of the library. One where you have just features like cut and select sources to the program and preview bus, etc. And it takes really uh, very little dynamic memory and flash memory in your Arduino. But you can go all the way up to the ATEM Max, which is just all the features and it, it uh, consumes more memory, both in terms of flash and dynamic memory. And then in between we have uh, the standard library and the extended library, which has some other balances between these things. And if we look at the um, fifth point, it is that we have very unique features as well. We can bundle commands, which is a very efficient way of giving instructions to the ATEM switcher. And we also have some hidden features that you won't find in the official API. And finally, uh, it will compile on Arduino Mega, Arduino Duo, and the Arduino Ethernet platforms. The documentation of the ATEM protocol is found on our website. And I would like to show how you can use this information if you want to make an Arduino sketch for your own do-it-yourself project, or if you want to modify the code for one of our controllers, which you will, of course, get when you buy our hardware. And um, let's make just uh, a simple cut and see how that works. So you can search on this place, uh, this, this page for the word cut. And, um, then you find quite quickly there is something called cut here. We have provided pictures so you can also see which uh, controls and from the ATEM uh, software control that uh, is controlled by this particular command. So for instance we have one here which is called cut and apparently it looks like it's the cut button that uh, the same thing we're controlling. So you can see over here that we have um, a description of the command from the protocol. That's kind of detailed what you find in the first few rows. But if you look over here, you see the Arduino API. It means uh, which function do I need if I want to perform a cut in the uh, actual code. And you can see that it, it's uh, found in the ATEM Max, ATEM Extended, Standard, and the minimum version of the library. So for any of these API functions, you can um, you can figure out whether or not it's available in the particular flavor of the library that you chose for your project. Finally, we also try to map many of these API methods to the official Blackmagic API uh, method name from um, the SDK. So what you see is that there's a function or method called perform cut ME and it takes a parameter to determine if it's uh, the ME1 or ME2 that you want to operate. 
Another popular thing would be auxiliary channels. So let's just search for auxiliary. And there you find um, a place with a, a, a green header. That means it's if you want to get information about what sources on auxiliary 3. This is done by the command get auxiliary source input and then you specify which auxiliary channel, uh, channel we are talking about. If you want to set the input source on auxiliary 3, you find a similarly named method in the library. So it's also really consistent naming, which is so cool when you're developing with it. I enjoyed it myself so much because it's very easy to, when you want to set something, you can get the value of the same parameter and without having to look in the documentation, you can kind of easily infer what that might be. So it's a really, really clean um, implementation we did with the Arduino, which is cool. And then you can just go on like this. You see we have like 30 pages of information, which is walking you through the whole protocol uh, and um, how you can manipulate all parameters of the ATEM switches. It might be fun for you to get a quick sneak peek into the engine room of reverse engineering. So I decided to take the chance and show you something from how we do it. And uh, what you see here in the background is a packet sniffer. So it's listening on the network how the ATEM software control is communicating with an ATEM switch. And you see that every second they are exchanging packets. The ATEM protocol is really very efficient and I like it a lot. I think it's great work they have done and uh, it was very easy to work with, but still a little bit cryptic when you uh, look at these, a uh, lot of codes and everything. But let me just show you how, for instance, a simple cut command looks. So we go to the ATEM software control, and I'm now gonna press the cut button and then stop the packet sniffing, and we'll look at the package that the ATEM software control sent to make a cut on the ATEM switcher. Okay, so I press cut, I go back here and I stop, and then what you need is to figure out which of these many package could potentially be the command to perform a cut. And I think it's this one. And I see that from the size of the package. So if you look at what is inside, you can see that inside this package, you got a little um, uh, word, dcut. And uh, you can see it was not in some of the other ones, but in this one, dcut. And that is actually the uh, information of the command sent to the ATEM switcher to make it perform a cut. And if you look at the response package coming back from the ATEM switcher, you can see a lot of information like uh, how the tally information was changed, how the program and the preview bus inputs has changed in response to the cut action. So this is how we do it. This is uh, basically how the whole ATEM protocol has been reverse engineered by looking at the data package on this level. One of the consequences of our designs being open source is that you'll find people all over the world developing controllers with our software and our hardware designs, and that's perfectly okay. It's even fun to see which ideas people have. What is not so much fun is when people are not following the rules, because there are rules. And one of them is that you need to attribute us, and you also need to keep your code open source if you base it on what we do. This is an example of someone who has done a desktop controller for his ATEM switcher based on our designs. We have had nothing to do with this really, we just had some email exchange with the guy, but that's really cool to see what people are doing with it. Here's another example where uh, we have a producer of wireless tally systems and um, what I like about this page is that it's really buying into the philosophy. So for instance, you'll find that on the page there's a clear reference to our website and the fact that he's basing his products on our technology. And you'll also find that he even bought the idea of open source in general so that he is sharing the schematics and everything for his work so you can actually go and do your own wireless telecontroller based on his work. This is another example and you'll see that uh, in this controller also made by an individual, um, we have a reference on the box to uh, the fact that it's based on Scorehoy hardware. And that brings me to our license page, because really, if you have good intentions, you want to follow the rules, right? And what are the rules? This is kind of where we explain it. So first of all, we have uh, the new uh, GPL uh, open source license for our code, and we have Creative Commons for all the other stuff. And you can go read those licenses, and you should, but you can also read here what we consider good conduct. And one of the things is that you attribute us on the product, on your website, depending on how you're using our products. So please go and read our Q&A. I think it should be fun and easy to understand the mentality that you 
uh, have to adopt if you are going to use our freely available information in your products and your projects. Good luck and have fun with the ATEM library for the Arduino platform.